Ladies and gentlemen, over the past two months, we have turned this pile of materials into a Douglas DC-3, which is now almost ready to fly. In the last episode, I have asked you to vote on what livery you would like to see this aircraft painted, and the majority of you seem to really like the Buffalo Airways. With that out of the way, let's start today's episode off by removing the film that covers the skin. I need to do this in order to be able to sand the fuselage. And while I'm doing this, I would like to thank everyone for all the positive feedback I have received on the previous episodes. It keeps me motivated to work on the project. Once the film was removed, I took a knife and started to smooth out the fuselage in order to make the sanding easier. Then, I sanded the whole fuselage using a file. It is important to use a file instead of sandpaper, because sandpaper cannot sand the hot glue. Once everything was smooth, I made a few extra adjustments and started covering the fuselage with the everything filler. I bought this product in the Netherlands, but I'm sure you can buy similar products all over the world. Its primary purpose is to fill holes in wood, walls or anything else. What I really liked about it is that it's super light, almost foam-like. I covered a small section of the fuselage and the engine housing, and then I tested how sandable the material is when dry. I was quite happy with the result, so I went ahead and covered the whole fuselage and engine housings. As I have mentioned in the previous episodes, my plan was to laminate the whole fuselage in glass fiber. This would create a very strong and smooth surface. The glass fiber laminate was supposed to go on top of this white filler material, but as it turns out, life does not always go according to plans. The material that I've ordered in mid-January has still not arrived, so I was faced with a bit of a dilemma. Should I wait for it, or should I find an alternate solution? As you can see, the surface ended up looking pretty good, so I decided to try how paintable it is. The foam itself is not paintable, because the solvents inside paint will simply dissolve it. So, I was hoping that the thin layer of the filler material will be enough to protect it. And, the results look promising. The surface is not perfect, but I think it will be good enough. the filler material was able to protect the foam from being dissolved, so I went ahead and covered the remaining parts in it as well. After a bit of sanding, the last thing left to do was to cover up these holes at the back of the airplane. I did this by attaching a piece of card using super glue. Now that everything is covered up, let the painting begin. Considering the situation, I was quite happy with the results. Before I could paint the wings, I had to take care of the wingtips, which still haven't been finished. Spray paint does not adhere very well to tape, so I sanded the piece of tape that attached the elevator to the wing. I have also covered up any imperfections that became visible after painting. The wings were sanded and painted like the rest of the airplane. The roof of the airplane needed to be painted white. Once everything was covered up, I painted it with white spray. And when the paint was dry, I realized we have a big problem. The solvent in the white spray seems to be much stronger and has eaten into the surface of our foam. Somehow, I had to save the airplane. I decided to try adding a much thicker layer of the filler material. After a bit of sanding, I tried painting it again, this time being much more careful. I have applied the paint in four very thin layers. 
And success. The effort has clearly paid off. Now I have prepared the parts that needed to be painted cyan. Since I could not find any spray paint in the correct color, I was forced to use acrylic paints. I have never used them for airplanes before, but they seem to have worked very well. They were much better at covering up imperfections in rough surfaces. They did, however, require at least two coats. In any case, I was very pleased with the result. Now it was time to start adding the details. For the black accents, I made stickers out of black electrical tape. This bottom stripe required a more sophisticated black and white sticker. Now it was time to engineer the buffalo sign. I decided to cut it out of tape and use it as a painting guide. And while the paint was drying, I added more details to the wings. I decided to make the black lettering yet again out of electrical tape. If I was to paint it, the edges would be far more blurry and undefined. And the same is true for the cockpit windows. Next, I have painted the belly of the airplane. The last thing left to do was to add the Buffalo Airways logo. There are a few more details that I want to add in the future, but for now the airplane is finished. In the next episode, it will be time to fly the airplane for the first time. I hope you have enjoyed the last episode of the DC-3 build. If you have, then please consider leaving a like. It would really help out my channel and make it possible for me to make content like this in the future. Thank you for watching and wish me luck with the maiden flight.